RJ, Tyler Matheson has a question for you. Tyler, go ahead. RJ, if I might, uh, you cite the range on this R2 as 300 miles. I'm curious as to how you calculate that range, and will the driver in the real world really get anything close to 300 miles yeah. of range? My skepticism comes as an owner of an RV, not one of you, uh, excuse me, of an EV, uh, not one of yours. And I just don't believe that the, that the cited yeah. mileage is what I experience. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so we, when we cite the, the 300 miles, we think of that as real world range. Uh, there's the EPA standard, which, which drives what's tested, but it's really important from a customer expectation point of view for us, for the vehicle to achieve that EPA rated range. And so we've spent a lot of time in that. We've seen that with our R1 products, that the stated range actually matches what you see in the real world. Um, but I think this is a big, a big part of how you know, when we talk about being authentic with our customers, being authentic with our owners, a big part of what we focus on. So you seem to acknowledge the, the possibility that, that, that there is a discrepancy between what the EPA test is and what the real world range is. But I'm hearing you say that in this case, when you say 300 miles of, of range on a charge, you're going to get 300 miles. Yes, some vehicles, certainly you see that discrepancy. With Rivian, we've, and there's lots of people that do these independent tests, we've really focused to make sure we achieve the range that we talk about uh, in terms of EPA. RJ, you're talking about this latest decision yeah. in terms of pausing in Georgia, yeah. a savings near term of $2.25 billion. And I'm not expecting you to give guidance, yeah. but as you've gone through what's really been a crushing six months, how comfortable are you with your liquidity right now? Well, this, you know, being able to launch R2 both earlier and being able to launch it with a lot less capital is really important for us to take the capital we have and take that through the launch of R2. And it really allows us to have a lot more flexibility and control our destiny in that regard and not having to uh, be subject to some of the, the volatility of the, of, the, of the capital markets. Well, you see what's happening in the EV market. Your shares are getting crushed. Almost all EV shares uh, and EV company shares are yeah. getting crushed. What's your thought? Well, I think ultimately what we can say here is the world will electrify. Every car sold in the United States and, and for that matter all markets will eventually be electric. Now the question we can debate is when that happens but key to that is getting great choices. Customers need choices that are deeply compelling, uh, and that's how we see R2. We see it as something that's going to take the success we've had with R1, translate that into a lower price point, smaller form factor. So we've, we've, I've never been this excited about a product as I am about R2. RJ Scaringe, founder and CEO of Rivian, on a big day here in Laguna Beach where they unveiled the R2 and the R3. Guys, back to you.